Greetings everyone, this week we're going to do things a little differently. I'm going to share with you an interview I did with Gary Berman, who's my partner on this project, the Cyber Hero Adventures, Leela Kumar and the Guardians of Vision. Uh, this is a project we collaborated on, it's a comic book project, and I'm going to just go, we're going to go through the process of creating a comic. I think there's a lot that you can gain from this. So I'm just going to share this interview with you, we're going to talk a little bit about this particular book, what it's all about and everything, and and you know, like I said, some insight into making a comic. So without any further delay, here is Gary. Hi everyone, this is Gary Berman, host of the Cyber Hero Adventures show. And today we have a very, very special episode where we're going to be taking you for the first time ever behind the scenes into our comic creation process. And I'm really, really honored to have our creative director and uh, my partner in this endeavor, Scott Circling. Hey, Scott, welcome to the show. Hey, Gary, how's it going? So glad to see you <laughs> and so glad to see you laughing. Why are you laughing already? I mean, we've been seeing a lot of each other lately because we've been working on this big comic book project and it's it's nice that we kind of got to kind of put the, you know, finalize it and everything. So, so it's good yeah. that good we can come on here and kind of talk about it after and now that it's done and everything. So it's like it's quite a bit of a process, but I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that. So yeah, indeed. And you know, so one of the interesting things that um, I've listened and learned from about the cybersecurity community is the challenge associated with having you know substantive, serious content, um, even as a name, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or FUD, which obviously makes a great uh, you know, character in the comic world. But um, how do we balance that between the modality of a comic when um, you know, there are those who believe that uh, they're not uh, serious enough for a particular uh, industry or things like that? I mean, yeah, it, it is kind of, and it's an uphill battle that a lot of cartoonists and people that create comic books have to, are kind of up against because, uh, you know, a lot of people that may not have, I think if most people really think about it, they'll understand that comics just aren't just for kids. Um, I mean, if you look at the number of movies, I mean, the biggest thing in movies right now are like superhero, you know, based on, they're all based on comic right, books right, for the most part. And if you've ever been one of those shows, it's not all kids. It's not like you're going to, you know, like a, a Disney movie or something like that. Right. Um, there's people of all ages. I go to comic conventions all the time. I do signings and things like that. The people that are coming up to my booth uh, very rarely are, are children. I mean, I would say, I would say, you know, more more adults are probably interested now in comics than than probably even children. So it, it's it really is a big, you know, it's it's a large and and even narrowing it down to just superheroes i mean that's not even fair because comics can be anything when people say well i don't i don't really like comics for whatever reason they're usually referring to i'm not into superheroes when you know comics can can cover so many different subjects just like prose can you know so i mean it's it's there, there's comics based on everything and, and some of those comics are educational and there have been comics that have told really serious topics so if anyone's familiar with with uh, Art Spiegelblum's mouse, I mean, it told the story of the Holocaust. Right. So if you yeah. can do that, you can tell anything. People do. I mean, uh, you know, just there, there's comic. Basically, anything you can think of, there's been a comic book that is that has illustrated that. So well, um, you know, just to build on that, to build on that point, I mean, you know, one of the um, interesting things I've come across um, over these past years is um, kind of research about how the brain, you know, processes information, and by using um, a visual medium, you know, such as comics, graphic graphic novels, it actually ignites different parts of the brain and, and, and can facilitate uh, absorption of the knowledge. Yeah, true. And, and I, I, I can definitely speak to that because I grew up as somebody who really struggled in school and academics and everything like that. And uh, what I realized later after I, you know, after I graduated and went to college and, and I, I, what I found was it wasn't necessarily that, you know, that I wasn't smart or anything like that. It was just the way I learned differently than the way that the school system was structured. And so when I got on my own, you know, I was able to, you know, build a, build a, a, a pretty nice career doing what I want and you know as an artist and everything because 
I learned how to educate myself um, in a way that works for me. So how I learn and how a lot of people learn are, like you said, visually, and comics are a great way to do that. So, And, you know, how you and I first uh, came to know one another was through your great uh, series and your, your books and your YouTube videos, uh, Making Comics 101. Um, so as our audience is looking at the cover of that book, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit of, uh, about um, what's in it and, and what your motivation was and things like that. Yeah, so I mean, I've been I've been doing YouTube content for a while, and again, that's because I think a lot of people they learn visually, and like I know, and and it can be different. For instance, like if I'm watching a YouTube video or something, if it's just if it's just you know a, a narration. Um, or if it's just, say if it's just text on a screen and then it's got music in the background, sometimes you'll find YouTube videos like that where right, you yeah. read the test. To me, I need somebody to actually like talk through the process. So, and somebody else might might learn a different way, but for me, so that's kind of the content that I do. And I, I basically, I, you know, because I am a cartoonist, I do a lot of stuff. I've learned a lot along the way. And when I was coming up, I didn't, you know, I didn't have YouTube to teach, you know, there were some books and stuff on the subject, but, um, and back then, a lot of a lot of illustrators they were hesitant to share things because it was like, oh, this is a carefully guarded trade right. secret or whatever. Right. Nowadays, people are more people are more apt to put that information out there, and you can, which is really what one of the amazing things about the internet is you can learn pretty much anything. People are willing to share that. So, I mean, just there's nothing you can't learn just even off of YouTube. So, I in order to be a part of that, in order to give back some some of the things that I've learned, I wanted to share pretty much everything I've learned. So, um, and one of those is comics. So I created, I, I was looking, there's a lot of, there was a lot of content out there on how to create comics, but it was like a video here, or a video here by different people. And there was right. nothing structured. Right. There were people, there were a few that people who started to do it, like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process of how to make a comic over, over 20 videos or whatever. And they'd start, and then about video five, they just quit. So, so there right. was some of that, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. If I'm going to, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to, I'm going to put out a multi-video series on how to create comics, everything from coming up with your ideas all the way to printing, publishing, and all the steps in between. And so that I came, that I came up with uh, making comics 101, and it's, it's pretty much. Uh, I stand by this, and I'll say that it's pretty much the most comprehensive course for free on YouTube that you're going to that on how to make comics. So. Yeah, and yep. um, you know, for our audience, you're going to be able to uh, look at uh, some of Scott's videos and things like that by going to our website, cyberheroescomics.com, and uh, you'll see some of the amazing stuff that I had the privilege of, of uh, watching, and I've been doing this uh, for some time myself, and uh, I felt like a complete neophyte, um, because uh, in addition to the substance, you're a, you're a great teacher and a great communicator. Let's jump into the process of uh, comic yep. creation. Um, you know, and one of the interesting uh, things that I learned early on is I, I've got a book called Cybersecurity for Dummies. Um, and 10 pages into that book, I was lost. And so I realized there had to be a better way to distill complicated cybersecurity and technology information. So we started anthropomorphizing real life information, real life hacks and came up with characters, some of which you see behind, like Vernon the Virus, or Phoebe the Fisher, uh, or Sonny the Social Engineer. These characters are all based on reality, but they're given these forms so that, you know, people uh, of all ages can, you know, just get their heads around what it is that we're attempting uh, to communicate. So. Uh, we're going to be uh, sharing now with uh, our audience uh, some of the interesting process uh, that you know we go about uh, to create this. And the very first thing I'd like to ask you about, Scott, is is ideation. Where does an idea come from? Well, uh, it, 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 I guess it depends on the project. Like if it's if it's something that I'm coming up, if I'm you know if I'm developing this for myself. Um, that's one thing if I'm developing it for like working with you, you already have, uh, you know, predetermined, you have been a goal that you're trying to accomplish. So, so if we go in for that scenario, you come to me and say, okay, we have this client, they want, uh, we want to, uh, teach their base or whatever, educate their base on cybersecurity. 
Um, and then whatever other parameters, say if it's in a healthcare situation, uh, um, scenario or, uh, or technology or whatever. And then, so we take, we basically take all, all these are all the things we need, you know, and I, I, I'm sure and this isn't specific to comics. So anyone I'm sure in your audience, they, they can get their head around this. It's kind of the same with any project. These are our goals. This is, this is what we need to have. And then from there, you know, I get to figure out what, okay, so how do we build a story around this? Um, and then, uh, you know, so like, just like we kind of did the same thing with the, the comic book we just finished where you already had some of your characters created like D.B. the Fisher and, um, and uh, you know, the social engineer and all. we had a number of those characters, but we needed to create additional characters for this particular, you know, uh, this particular storyline based on where it takes place and everything like that. Um, so then I get to think, okay, you know, what, you know, what can I infuse in these, in these particular characters, you know, different personalities that, that, that play off some of these villains. We get to maybe create new villains or heroes. I guess we had to, for this, this one that we just did, we had to create a whole new group of heroes. And um, that came from the story we're trying to tell it takes place in this, um, uh, would they, I guess they would refer to it as a cognitive region or most people would understand it as a smart city these different regions and so I thought well wouldn't it be great if we had a different character from each one of these regions just like you're taking your anthropomorphizing you know a, a, like a virus or you know or whatever and creating a character out of that we kind of take these uh, different lands and mm -hmm. take the aspects of those lands what which which was each particular land about and we create a, a, a hero based on that so so that's kind of that's how I start I start with you know what what we need to accomplish and how can we do this creatively and then from there um a lot of times uh, let, let me uh, yeah, let me yeah. uh, pause uh you're saying so many cool things so i just want our audience <laughs> yeah, stop to... me at any time <laughs> no no it's why well, to amplify uh you know something so you know the 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 notion of of, of storytelling and in creating you know heroes um what what is the the source uh, what is the process what are the processes you know that that you know people go through to come up with motivations for characters you, um, you know? like where, where, how do you do that yeah so what i do is i use a and and this again this isn't specific to comics so some of your audience might be familiar with this as well but are you familiar with the the uh concept of mind mapping yes okay so mind mapping it's like a non-linear way of taking notes so instead of just having uh your your linear list of ideas you start at the center with the central mm -hmm. idea and then you kind of branch out from there. So that's typically how I start. Um, I'll come up, maybe I'll come up with the character's name or if I don't have the character's name yet, uh, or maybe I'll like put a character, put name and put question mark. And then I will have my different offshoots of what could be a possible name for this particular character. It mm -hmm. can be anything. And then the more ideas you get and, it, and it's a way of almost brainstorming with yourself, but if you, if you're working with a team, then everyone can contribute to that. You can take everyone's ideas, put it in this mind map, and then, oh, we, now we've got the perfect name for our character. Like we had a, um, we had a character named Sage, who is kind of this, this kind of tree kind of creature, like if you've seen Marvel's Groot or like from Lord of the Rings, the tree people in there, um, but also kind of infused with, with tech and stuff. But we wanted this character to be this sort of this wise person. So I really like the the double you know double meaning of the word sage, where you can it's sage advice, it's intelligent, it's smart, but right. also how it relates to nature. So things like that. So all oh, these things fit together. I, I like this idea, and then you can kind of go from there, and then and then you know that's kind of how you just generate ideas, or at least you know in that brainstorming process, and yeah, you just find, find what works perfect. So, you know, so, you know, you, uh, you generate the idea, uh, you know, the, the heroes, they're, they have some type of form, they have some type of name. What about the plot? So, yeah, again, in this particular situation, we had a number of, of uh, points that we had that we wanted to get across some, you know, different like, um, you know, don't share your personal information on public online, different, all these different, you know, uh, bullet points that we want to get so we get to figure out how to how to work those into our our situation our, our scenario so i use that sort of a skeleton and then again 
it's it's a lot of maybe moving puzzle pieces around like okay so how do we because the main character in our story was a kid and then we've talked there's another thing about you know sharing you know uh, I'm trying to remember per, uh, we, personal information on personal mind. well personal information that was one thing but also you know we had we needed something that had to do with business and that didn't really relate to the kids so so we've got her and her family traveling to this destination and along the way um, we can introduce those different things but we want we don't want it to just be just we want it to be fun and everything so you know we get to figure out if there's some humor we can we can drop in there we had a few running gags and everything um, just to well one of the uh, yeah uh, one of the uh, uh, to give you an interruption one of the interesting yeah. characters or uh, it's not a gag but it's a, a device is, uh, we created a new character of, which is a combination dog and mm -hmm. drone. It's, it's called Drog. Right. You know what? What? What was the intention there? Like, sort of the to break through the fourth wall, so to speak. You know, I mean, what? What? What does a narrator character do? Okay. Yeah. So I mean, and, and Drog. Just to, just to give Gary credit, Drog was created before I was kind of brought on. But I think we were able to kind of take that idea and do something interesting with it. With with um, we did want to speak directly to the audience, to the reader. And so Drog is somebody who he's not really he's not really along with the heroes or the family on this journey that we you know. But he's there just for the reader. So he'll pop up and he'll just reiterate because there'll be something going on in the scene where somebody is sharing their personal information and Drog is there to pop up and say, you know, oh, don't do this. That way you can, it's, it's just kind of fun. It's familiar to kind of see him pop up time and time again throughout the story and just kind of, you know, add a little punch to what's going on in the story. Also, it's, it's a good way to, um, it's, it's a good way to like introduce the story, you know, he, cause he's basically kind of like the narrator, you know, and we did some, we did some certain things to make sure that, that people know that he's he's not actually there with the rest of the characters in the story, like the way his, and we'll get into lettering and stuff later, but his word balloons are slightly different colors and the way he, the, the panels that he's in are, are slightly different. So you know that he's he's there just for, for us as the reader um, to get those points across. Exactly, and yeah. and um, and so now you know we have we have the basic idea of, of the characters. We we have uh, a pretty good guidance about uh, their motivations, and so it all now you know comes together in the form of a script. Tell us about that because I I I think it it requires such a level of specificity. It's sort of like doing a movie, like over the shoulder shot. You know, maybe you can tell our audience about yeah, that. it's. That. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are more familiar with that, even if you haven't read comics, that you may probably have heard of the idea of like, oh, um, uh, you know, a, a, a bird's eye view or whatever. And we kind of, in comics, we use a lot of those same terminologies, but we're working, we're not necessarily working in, I mean, I guess we still work in scenes, but they're also, I mean, comics offer, comics are unlike other mediums, and there's certain things you can do in comics that you can't do in any other medium. For one, for one thing, in comics, you can set the pacing of the story by, say, the number of number of panels you use. Where if you're if you're watching a movie, you're it's it's the movie's going to go along at the pace it's going. Right. Um, with comics, people might slow down, and if you if you do some interesting things with panels, like if you have if you want to really get the point across that this what's going on right now is really a slog or boring, you'll just you'll just care, you'll have a whole bunch more panels where very little happens from each. Thing to a next, or if you want it more exciting, then it's then it's faster pace, and you can do all that with panels. So, so there's some of that when you're writing the script. So you're thinking about you know what's happening on each page. You got to take into consideration the page turn. For instance, if you want a big reveal, you don't want to show it on the opposite page. You want to make sure that when they flip that over and it's a brand new page, that that's oh wow, because you don't want them to see it before they you know they kind of flip it. So. So that's another thing you have to think about is the pacing that you've got, you know, usually when you open a comic, you've got one facing page and when you open it, you have a spread and then it's spread still the very end, last page. So you get to figure out, oh, what's kind of understand what's going to happen and when that page turn is going to happen. So if you have a big reveal, it's not, you don't already see it until you turn that page like, oh, wow. So, so yeah, things no, like, that's cool. yeah. yeah, stuff like that are things you want to take into consideration when writing your script for your comic. 
Yeah, uh, it's a lot more complicated than, than, than I thought when I first started getting into it. And, and uh, as we're getting even more granular, it's, it's incredible, the process. Um, okay, so let's say we have a, a, a fully developed script. Uh, what's next? So from there, what we'll do is we, and uh, the, so this whole process can be, typically it's like an assembly line process where different people have different roles to play. Although somebody can create a comic themselves from start to finish, they can write it, draw it. I, I mean, I've got my own personal comic that I do all that, but then I, I do other projects where, like in this one, I'm, even though I am an artist, we had another artist working on this and I, I did the writing uh, chore on this one. But um, so, so basically we've got the script and the script, pretty much, you know, explains what's happening, then that script is usually given over to a penciler. Um, and the penciler is basically the illustrator. Sometimes the penciler can also be the anchor and what, what the anchor does, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but just to explain what's going on. Um, the anchor makes it basically so it's print ready because pencils don't always reproduce as crisp, so they've got to go over with ink. The penciler could also be the anchor. Um, in this case, that, that was the case. Um, and any pencil might not even mean pencil because a lot of times now we do stuff digitally. But so the pencil usually what they'll do is they will do uh, what, we, what we call uh, thumbnails or some people might refer them to them as storyboards. So it's basically a real rough um, interpretation of what's gonna happen in the story. And I'm sure we've got some, some visuals to kind of show you. Um, yep. uh, and so, so we've got a rough idea, and this can be, it, it's really up to the artist how rough it is, as long as they can communicate what's going on. It could be, it could be stick figures. Um, our illustrator in this project, her roughs are pretty, pretty for roughs anyway, um, they're, they're pretty tight. So, but anyway, uh, basically lay out everything so you can see visually, so everyone can see visually, the writer, and then that way you're not spending a whole lot of time drawing a page and like, ah, oh, that's not really what I wanted, and then they have to redraw it. So you get the idea of what the illustrator is imagining with these rough drawings. Um, then once all those rough drawings are approved, then they start to do the more detailed pages, the pencils, and then, um, if, and then if the pencils are done, they could be handed off to an inker or the penciler can do the ink in themselves. And so um, our audience is looking at some samples of that uh, now as, as, um, as we're speaking. Um, and, and so after we have the, the pencil, the inker, um, or, or the digital you know, representation of the story, um, the next step is to add color. And yeah. uh, that's pretty complicated, isn't it? What color palette, for example? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so and, 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 and not all comics have to be color. I mean, I do a comic that's a black and white comic. Um, but but in, in this case, you know, we do, I think, I think there are people like me who really love black and white, just the line art stuff. But for the, mo for the general population, they want to see stuff in color. Um, unless you're talking about, like, Japanese manga or something, which a lot of times is black right, and white. Right, right. Yeah. But um, so anyway, but in this in this book we are doing color, so we have to have a color. So um, and it's it's really a lot of a lot of colors have sort of a painting background. They have a really good understanding of color theory, um, so they know how shadows fall, how that affects things. They know you know how to create a, a mood based on like if you're if you want, if you're in like a warm environment, you're using reds versus a cool environment, you're using, uh, you know, blue, cool colors like blues and things. And that also can, that also gets the emotion across. If you want something, if you want to kind of give sort of a sense of anger or something, or, or then you might go with a more of a warmer color palette versus a cooler. There's all kinds of, you know, things that if you learn color theory, you can, you, you can kind of, Integrated well, the and also, uh, you know, many many brands uh, yeah. have uh, approved colors, you know, and, and uh, understandably, they're uh, very um, they want to make sure uh, that the color palette fits within their their structure and how their brand is is represented in, in graphic form, right? Yeah, and yeah, it's it's really no different different than. Um, let's see. I mean, I mean, red is used a lot in, in branding and everything, but there's some, there's, you know, there's some companies that that's not really the, the look they want to get across. If they, you know, you could either use something different to differentiate yourself or, you know, maybe, maybe we want something, I mean, any, any business you can look at, there's, there's really particular reasons why they picked out their, their color scheme. So, 
Yeah, and indeed, and it's important to be aligned, you know, and yeah. consistent uh, with that. So, so now we have the colors, and so um, here's you know one of the the final steps, which is uh, merging the the script, in other words, the dialogue mm -hmm. with everything that's been done in the form of uh, what are referred to as thought bubbles. Maybe you can uh, share with our audience um, the nature of, of thought bubbles, and then also how do you imbue uh, Pay, uh, you know, a comic with sound. Yeah, yeah. So, so for that, that task is done by the letter. So they're usually a specific person that does the lettering, and you know, they can be referred to as different things. They can be referred to as speech bubbles. I, I typically refer to them as word balloons or thought balloons, depending. You know, if it's something somebody's speaking, that would be a that would be a word balloon versus something somebody's thinking. That would be a thought balloon or right, whatever. And there right, and right. there's different ways to represent that. Um, you know, uh, a, a thought balloon would be more, it kind of looks like a puffy cloud. It could, but nowadays, a lot of com a lot of comic artists are moving away from that and more of a, they like have an inner thought, which might be in a box, which would be like a caption box. Or in our case, like with a, we have a narration, um, it more might be more of a kind of a square thing, like, oh, this is the city, blah, 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 to introduce things. If it's something that's not being spoken by a character, but a narrator, that might be in a, a caption box. Um, and there's all kinds of different way, word balloons you can use. If it's a robot speaking, you might have like a kind of a, like a lightning bolt balloon tail. So the b balloon is basically its structure. It, it is kind of what it is. There's a balloon, which is the, 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 the bubble part. And then there's the balloon tail, which is what comes down and kind of points to the character, whoever's speaking, so you know who's speaking. And there's a lot of rules, like it's kind of like Ghostbusters, where you don't cross the streams, like you don't want to have a balloon here, a balloon here, and then opposite to the person talking where the balloons cross. And there's all kinds of rules and stuff like that that I don't want to bore you with. But but there, you know, there's just tons that I've got. A, I, I've got. I've, I've designed like um, tutorials and things like that. On I've got something called the comic lettering master class which talks all about that kind of stuff um but also with lettering not only the words people are speaking are um sound effects or technically in comics there's no sound because it's there's no sound in comics so the, i guess the proper term would be onomatopoeia but that's kind of a mouthful it's a fun word to say but it's kind of a mouthful but <laughs> whether you call it onomatopoeia or 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 sound effects or whatever those are the word that, that's basically like the a sound that something is making like a crash or any like what you would see in a movie would be a sound effects and that's where you really get to have fun because there's all kinds of interesting ways you can illustrate sound in comics where like if you've got a if you've got a big explosion that kind of trails off you want to start off with big letters and then maybe the letters get a little smaller and if you want to show like a reverberation then you know it can you can kind of jack and make that that kind of jagged but i sound effects are one of my favorite things to do because it's when you're thinking about it, it's 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 almost like okay, what 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 is the sound that um, say uh, so so we've got in our I'm, I don't remember the sound effect that the that the the um, that the letter used on ours, but we had one of our characters shoot a harpoon and it it, it shoots through and then it hits like it hits like a, a, a like a panel or something on a yacht. So what does that sound like like? what is the sound of a harpoon going through the air? So right. when I'm doing sound effects, I'll say it out loud, I'll like, or like, and I'll, I'll roll around <laughs> my head. And then I'm like, how do you, how do you spell that? How do you spell a thum or a, a right, whoosh, right. Whoosh. Right. I mean, how do you spell that? So that's kind of, and there's no right or wrong way. So you just kind of figure that out. And then again, you kind of take into the way that it's traveling, you know, it's, it, it can kind of wave around or whatever, depending on what, and then, then what happens when it hits, hits another object, then it's like a thump or thump, depending on if it's metal, it'd be like a ting, or if it's, if it's, if it's something soft, it'd be like a, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. so anyway, so that's the job of the letter is. <laughs> well, you're, you know, you're, you're also touching on something as we're wrapping up here, you know, that's incredibly central to our DNA, um, which is that this is fun. You know that uh, the comic creation uh, process is fun. It's it's the opposite of kind of death by PowerPoint. You know, in <laughs> exactly. Fact, uh, exactly. So we created a character called the Presenter, and and her special uh, superpower was that she could put people to sleep with PowerPoint <laughs> slides. You know, I mean, and everyone in our industry and beyond knows the truth of that 
you know, that character in that statement. So, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, so, you know, Scott, uh, you know, words cannot adequately express uh, my gratitude, but a comic could, um, you know, so thank you so much for uh, who you are and, and uh, what you do and why you do it. And uh, for all the great uh, work that uh, we've been able to accomplish and uh, much more uh, going forward. So thank you uh, so much for everything. Thank um, you, Gary. And it's been a pleasure working on this project with you and hopefully we'll have a chance to do many more, so. And uh, to our audience, uh, stay tuned. Uh, thanks so much for who you are and uh, what you do and, and why you do it. Uh, this is Gary Berman signing off for today. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Cirkworks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. If you like making comics, then go to Cirkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.